Hi, I'm Jeff Bloomberg, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer at MGE. In this week's tip, I want to talk about the treatment coordinator position and whether or not you need one. So the treatment coordinator position is something that we're seeing a lot more of in the dental industry these days. I've been in the industry since the mid-90s, so we're going on well over 20 years at this point. And back then, you know, early mid-90s, you know, early 2000s, you primarily saw treatment coordinators in orthodontic offices. We're now seeing more and more new clients that already have treatment coordinators, and a lot of MGE clients end up picking up a treatment coordinator. So let's take a look at this position for a minute. Because part of the problem that we've seen is because it isn't very clearly defined, like let's say the dental assistant position in the industry, is we'll meet offices and what their treatment coordinator does is completely different than what this office's treatment coordinator does. It's a very new subject. So let's take a look at this position for a minute. What is a treatment coordinator? Well, essentially a treatment coordinator is someone whose job is to help the doctor get more patients to accept the treatment that they need. That's in essence what it is. Now, how does that differ from, let's say, the financial coordinator? Traditionally, the financial coordinator in a dental office handles a lot of things, especially if the office accepts assignment with regards to insurance, uh, estimating benefits, filing insurance, and so on. They might collect co-payments. In some offices, they may do financial arrangements, depending on how you're set up. Whereas the treatment coordinator is more focused on working with the doctor to help patients accept cases, usually cases that are a little bit more um, expensive, you know, at least a couple thousand dollars and so on up. Usually it doesn't require a treatment coordinator to help a patient work out financial arrangements for, you know, a couple compl occlusal composites that they'd normally work out with the financial coordinator. So that's the primary difference between those positions. So if we isolate this treatment coordinator position a little bit more and we look at it, we look at really their job is to help patients who have who need treatment to get that get started on that treatment plan and onto the doctor's schedule. Now, in a lot of offices, that position is usually filled by the office manager, this treatment coordinator position, meaning when the doctor is presenting a more consequential treatment plan, you know, maybe $4,000, $5,000, where the patient's going to owe $3,500, you know, after their insurance, or they're going to owe the whole thing if they don't have insurance. Usually, the office manager is filling the role of working out the financial arrangements, and getting that patient on the schedule, you know, bigger cases. In some offices, the financial coordinator might do it. I just know in a lot of the offices I've seen, it's usually the office manager. So then the question becomes, do you need a treatment coordinator? Because someone could look at it and go, wow, it would really be really cool if I had a treatment coordinator. Well, do you actually need one? Well, it really comes down to your volume. The first thing I would check if, to see if I needed a treatment coordinator is I'd talk to my office manager and find out how long they're spending in a given day or week on these types of cases. Now you'll sort of know because if you're the doctor, you're working with the office manager as you're doing this, but what you might not see is once you've presented the treatment plan, you might not see how long the office manager is spending with that patient. They might be spending a half hour, 45 minutes wrapping up all the finances. You just don't see it because you're on to the next patient. Well, you multiply that by four or five times a day, now the office manager has burned half their day on this instead of managing their being the treatment coordinator. So you start, to get the, you start to get the idea to determine whether you need a treatment coordinator it really depends on how much need is actually present in the practice. So if you're a practice maybe with one hygienist and uh, you're seeing one or two new patients a day, chances are you don't need a treatment coordinator because the amount of time the office manager is going to have to spend on those cases with you handling financial arrangements is going to be maybe, I don't know, hour or so a day, no big deal. Or you might have a financial coordinator who does that stuff and it's really no big deal. If you're getting four, five new patients a day and or more, or if you have maybe two, three hygienists going because there's all types of treatment that patients of record are going to need and they need to be spoken to about it, well, chances are you might need a treatment coordinator because now you're looking at whoever is wearing that treatment coordinator hat uh, in addition to whatever else it is that they're doing is spending hours on this position. Now, if they're not spending hours on this position, it means that the position is just not getting done and patients are leaving without treatment that they actually need. So that would be the first question. What's my volume and would it justify bringing somebody in? Now, if you do bring somebody in, and we're going to be doing some more tips over the next few weeks on a little bit more on this treatment coordinator position, specifically what do they do, what's the job description, uh, what does their day-to-day -day look like, and so on. But 
if you do bring somebody in, you want to bring in somebody who you could at least train or that they have a basic knowledge of sales or that you could train to sell. Uh, because that's essentially what the treatment coordinator position is. It is a sales position. Let me talk about this subject of sales for a minute. We cover it in all our tips. And we do a lot of sales training with our clients. Now, let's look at what sales isn't. I'm just going to take a minute and say this because sales gets a bad rap because, you know, you'll have salespeople that sell things to people that they don't need or that aren't right for them. We don't believe in that. For us, sales is not high pressuring somebody, forcing them to do something they don't need, making them get something that they don't want. That's not sales. Sales, in our view, is communicating with somebody effectively so that they understand why it is that they need something. If you take a patient and you explain their needed treatment to them, they need forward canals and six crowns. This is what they need. You've determined that as the doctor. And their answer to you is they need to go on a cruise instead. They just didn't get it. Bottom line, they didn't get it because what they need is that. I'm not saying they don't, they shouldn't go on the cruise, but they need that. All right? And they don't understand the importance of it. So there's a bit of a communication breakdown there. If you knew how to sell, they would understand the importance of that. When we're talking about sales, that's what we mean. If you want to learn how to increase your case acceptance, I definitely recommend you come here to MGE and try out the MGE Communication and Sales Seminars. They are the premier service in the industry on that subject itself. Otherwise, if you want to get a flavor for what it is that we do, you can check us out on our online training platform, DDS Success, where we have tons of training on the subject of case acceptance and staff training, as well as positional training, financial coordinator, receptionist, etc. It's DDS Success. You can click and try a free demo and get an idea of what it looks like and see if it's something for you. So with that, I'll leave you this week. This, this is You now have a generalized idea of do you need one or not, or at least you know what to do to figure out if you need a treatment coordinator. In the weeks to come, we'll be releasing some tips on a little bit more about the position, as I mentioned. I'll see you back then. If you have any questions about MGE in the meantime, you can call us at 800-640-1140. You can check us out online at mgeonline.com. And don't forget, if you'd like more tips like this to come into your uh, YouTube uh, inbox every week, don't forget to click subscribe and the notification bell so that you're notified when we release a new video. We'll see you at the next tip.